Thank you for those that have um, put your questions through. We're only going to ask four questions, um, and uh, I'm going to uh, just read them as, as they appear. Sarah Sella, can you can mandatory disclosures, climate and nature related, help with mobilising investment into restoration? Also, can reputation gain be a driver of change instead of financial return? Yes, on time. Um, if you think about uh, all of the work we've done in the uh, carbon and climate disclosure space to get to where we are, we have a lot of practice and experience behind. When we look at nature and biodiversity, um, there is a, still a while to go. It's not that easy to say we've got the tools that businesses can just immediately embrace, apply, and therefore improve their game when it comes to nature disclosure, but we will get there and the drivers and the pressure is in some ways. And I would say even faster than what the market or the customer are saying um, is the fact that nature disclosure is the other side of climate risks. So if we are serious about dealing with climate risk, we are one way or another dealing with nature too. Um, and then sec second part of the question was, the answer was yes as well. Yeah, also can reputation gain be a driver of change instead of financial return? And the answer is absolutely yes. Um, and what we've learned through research as well, which for us research team was you know, interesting and new, is that in addition to reputation gain, it's also this idea of um, actually investing to avoid future liabilities. So it's not just about reputation liabilities today, but it's also in, in the future avoiding risks that you know, may play out and impact the assets and the return on investment in 10 years' time. So a lot of businesses invest today without, some of them invest today without an expectation of return because of this idea of avoiding um, liabilities in the future. Kia ora. Comment for Matt. Excellent. Have you written up the process and the commitments underlying them and where can we buy the cream? <laughs> On the cream, talk to Kura. We gave her 50 pottles. I don't know what happened to them, but she's looking gorgeous today, so she's probably... <laughs> <laughs> We've been walking a lot with the iwi up there around uh, benefit sharing, um, trying to get... making sure the benefit is to that community, to the people that are uh, going to manage the, the ohiwa and have that sort of generational change. Um, so we've got... The recipes, we've got the information, our knowledge joins with, uh, join with their mataranga and hopefully we can get a, a, um, a benefit that goes generationally through that area. So no creep. I've got Yet. two potholes and the bidding starts at $5. <laughs> <laughs> Kia ora, John and Jason. Presumably your partners will pick up and run with your findings. But do you have a sense yet of what you might be able to say to other groups or interested part partners? Kia ora. Well, um, that's a good question. Um, I think the first thing uh, to say is that our research is kind of, we're still in the middle of it. Um, so we're still working with our case study partners uh, to, um, to understand their perspective on those, those three themes. Um, and certainly um, the the priority has to be in terms of benefits uh, back to the case study organisations that we're working with. But ultimately, uh, we do want uh, what we do find uh, to benefit everyone. Um, and so within our project, uh, there's a synthesis of the synthesis. Uh, so um, once we sort of uh, get these sort of five case study reports uh, together, then our team is going to synthesise what that actually means uh, in a general sense, uh, and then sort of write a summary of the summary uh, so that we get a very good idea about the implications, the benefits for everyone. Kia ora. We're all about synthesising up here, everyone. OK, look, our last um, question to Sarah Seller and Rob. Can seaweed sector be our point of entry in exploring and creating new revenue streams from investing into natural capital restoration? Um, so, from the conversations I've had with marine farmers, um, one of the points was 
if they if we could offer them sixteen hundred dollars a ton for seaweed the same way they get for mussels, then they'd be happy to go and farm seaweed. And that's sort of um, one of the stopping issues now is, is knowing where they can get that value from. So there's other ways for them to get revenue streams, such as uh, biodiversity credits, some of the bioremediation um, credits for that work, then they'd be happy to, to look into um, investing in those sorts of systems. Um, Thanks, Can we give these people a big round of applause?